Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. We're back in the fish room. I just wanted to show you a couple of new things, a couple of old things and a couple of updates. Got Mega Tank here. This is my custom made by me, eight foot by four foot by three foot fish tank. Um, there were some complaints in previous videos that my water was murky. Because it's not up to white glass, I think just the way that the light refracts through the glass on camera it doesn't show it as clear as it is, but I've never seen it clearer. Um, I did my DIY um, clarifying filter. It's done the trick. I've never seen it clearer. It's the clearest I've ever seen, but it's had a bit of a tank crash and a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of a tank crash. Even though the tank's been running for a good three months now without issue, it's been fully cycled with media that I've taken from other tanks. There's a big, massive sump underneath full of biological media. Uh, and from day one, it's been fine. The water parameters have been spot on, as the internet likes to say. Water parameters are perfect, but zeros across the board, except for nitrates, which is what you want. But a little bit of ammonia has crept in and a little bit of nitrite has crept in. So I do fairly regular water tests anyway, just so I can track it. We've had a little spike. In general, the fish seem okay. It's the, the slightest hint of ammonia and the slightest hint of nitrite. So doing a couple of big water changes, hopefully we'll sort that out. Um, the only problem with a tank that's two and a half thousand litres plus, a big water change takes a long time. So it's just finishing off now uh, and I'll go and have a wee game of darts, practice my 180s while we wait for that to finish off and then I'll show you the new fish. So I swear that's, that wasn't pre-recorded or editing magic. Um, I have had a 180 before, but it doesn't happen very often. So I've made up that I managed to get one on camera. But these are the two tanks I want to talk about today. In this tank, you might see if I move over there, there's a new fish. And then in this tank, we've got the Bucktooth Tetras, which I have mentioned before, but haven't mentioned them since I got them. So I wanted to give you a little bit of an update, but let's start over here with this guy. If you're playing along at home and had a regular viewer, you'll notice this is the tank that the angry tilapia fish was in. And that is not an angry tilapia. That is uh, apparently very docile giant garami. So I saw him advertised in one of the rehoming groups and it turned out to be from the same person that actually gave me the snake head. So the person who had the giant snake head, they got their tank all fixed up and they had this one that they wanted to move along so it just doesn't fit in with their plans. So we managed to do a swap. So I know that the tilapia is going to a good home and then I've managed to get this guy who is a fish that I wanted to get. Um, he's going to go into mega tank, but I don't want to put him in now while we're still having the slightest of issues shall we say with water parameters so i'm just keeping him here for he's been here about a week maybe another week before he goes into big tank um but he's awesome he's so playful he does like to come along and chase your hands and things like this so i thought we might give him a wee feed i'm told that they're partial to veggies so i've got a little strawberry we'll see if he fancies that he might not because I'm in here, obviously, and now because I'm filming him, he's not going to have it. So I've also got a little bit of banana. See if he fancies that. He has been feeding quite well on pellets. So I'm told that from the previous owner, he was having carrots and things like that quite readily. Fancy a bit of banana? He does. So obviously these are treats. This is not a staple diet because they can be quite messy things when you feed fruits and veggies and things like that. But he is an awesome fish. So he's a good, sold to me as 13 inches long, but yeah, he's at least 13, if not 14. He's a big old fish and he's going to do just nice in Mega Tank. Um, 
Grammys have always been a bit of a meh fish for me in the past. Not something I've really been that interested in, but the Giants, they are something different. So, really love the derpy look of this guy and how interactive he is. I think that is my thing, my niche with fish. Anything that's interactive, that comes to greet you at the glass when you come in, you just can't get better than that. So, I'm hopeful that this will work out long term. I'm told he's really peaceful, he's dead, dead chilled, so he should get on fine in the big tank because, like I say, even though it's a giant snakehead and everyone keeps telling me he's going to kill everything in the tank, he does not do that. He is a chilled snakehead. I think a lot of the problems with the bigger snakeheads is people torment them. People wind them up so as they can get them to flare and do all that kind of stuff. But that's just not been the case for this snakehead. He's just dead chilled and dead happy. So, if you want to see what happens with this guy over time, make sure you click the subscribe button and you'll see him when I add him to the tank and make sure everything goes well. But yeah, another few days in here and then we'll get him across to the big tank. I'll leave you alone now, buddy. This is the tank full of my Bucktooth Tetras. Now, I've had them in several different tanks. I've had them in a small empty tank. I've had them in a large empty tank, a large planted tank. Now they're in a kind of mid-size, sort of planted tank. There's lots of ornaments, lots of hides, lots of getaways. But I've been losing fish. So I did have quite a large group of these. And I think I've lost about four over the month and a half or so that I've had them. Again, nothing to do with water parameters. They just seem to be taking each other off. And speaking to a few people, that does seem to be quite a common problem with them. I, I, I struggled to say, oh, is it because I'm not feeding them enough? Is it because I'm giving them the wrong tank? But it doesn't matter what I seem to do. I seem to lose one every couple of weeks or so. Um, and you can see them now. One of them's chasing another one. But when they're not killing each other, they are fantastic fish. And we give them a mix of all different types of foods, whether it be flake, whether it be um, live or frozen foods rather some pellets, they take everything readily um, so they're definitely not going short of food but they just are angry and they seem to pick each other off so they've been in this tank for a couple of weeks and I haven't lost any yet since they've moved them into this tank so I'm hoping this is the kind of Goldilocks tank that I found the right size, the right temperature, the right the right everything so there's a lot of wood in there, there's a lot of rocks with lots of caves, swim throughs put in a bunch of plastic plants so as it gives some sight lines are broken up and that kind of thing so I'm hoping that that will do the trick for these guys uh, my idea was to put them in a bigger four foot tank but now I don't know that I've got enough of them to justify that so I'm still working on them I think that's the, the easiest thing to say is that I'm still not quite figured out the best way to keep them most of the advice on the internet well, unfortunately, it does conflict. So, of the two or three people that I've spoken to who have kept these in the past before, they've said, yeah, they're quite hard. Uh, try this. And the try this has always been a different thing. So, I've tried them all now. So, hopefully, over the coming months and years, I'll figure out what it is that works for them. But they're really cool fish. Since I've had them, the ones that have survived, obviously, um, have put on a fair bit of size. Their colours have come out excellent i mean the markings on them are just there's there's almost second to none and so fast so boisterous they're always swimming around um yeah they're really really cool fish but like i say i'm still trying to figure them out so i don't want to do this is what you do because i don't know yet so definitely a fish that you need to keep on their own um, they're called the buck to tetras it's because they are uh, carnivorous fish this eat the scales off anything else that you might want to put in the tank with them so they need to be kept alone and they need to be well fed that's a kind of general given um, but as for any other specifics to keep them happy I think a bigger tank is obviously better because the more space they've got to swim as you can see they are quite fast swimmers quite busy fish um, but yeah I'm, I'm still trying to figure them out properly Humphrey of course still loving life um, <laughs> yeah he's doing great Loving all the commotion going on in the fish room. Um, he's my my flower horn. Again, 
he has that personable thing where he, well, he's not trying to be friendly with me, he's trying to kill me. But still, it's quite nice. I love a fish that plays with you. Up here we've got the rams that I got from the auction, they're doing pretty well as well. Um, I've got six in here at the moment, so I'm just waiting for them to put on size and I'm hoping that some of them will pair off. Um, then we can move them as pairs into separate tanks for themselves. But yeah, they're looking looking good, looking healthy, eating well, all the things you want. And someone asked about the better fish that I got at the auction. This is him in here. Again, starting to colour up nicely. I think he was a bit of an impulse buy, but yeah. We all do it. Happy in his own little tank. And these are the Corridoras that I got at the auction as well. Um, you see that one at the front there with the long dorsal fin? So, still can't quite decide if these are just normal bronze Corridoras or something more special. And they were sold as something more special. Um, but now that they've settled in, they do look good. As in, they look quite healthy and they are breeding readily. Um, but yeah, a couple of them have got long fins, which, I mean, I'm never really after like, long fin variety of things. There's always a bit of a, mm, people like them, people don't like them. But that one's pretty cool. Yeah, so I've got a group of six of these in here and I'm doing well. I just thought it was interesting that a couple of them have got those long dorsal fins. falling more and more in love with Corydoras, so I think we might dedicate a few more tanks to these guys, the little water piggies. So let me know in the comments if you are a Cory expert and can help me identify what these actually are. This tank are the black Schultze Corridoras that I got from one of my subscribers. I moved them into their own tank just so as we can maybe get a bit of breeding action without the rainbows picking them all off. Yeah, but these are the black variant of the ones that I've just shown you, the bronze variant, so that's what they were sold to me as, but I think they're just regular bronze ones. There you go, I just wanted to take you through some of the tanks and the goings on in the fish room. If you're interested to see what happens next, make sure you click that subscribe button, follow along. If you want to join me on my live stream, Friday night, 9pm, every week we do a live stream. We have a quiz, we have a few laughs, a few drinks, all good stuff. If you can't handle the whole two hours of a live stream, have a second channel. All these links will be in the description. The second channel just has clips and just short bits so you don't have to go through the whole two hours but click the subscribe button on the main channel that's the main thing go and watch another video click something else click 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 see you later bye